This Bible study is going to be on pastors, as in ministers. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1. Woe, that's a strong word, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. Pasture, saith the Lord. Do you know that pastor and pasture, as in, you know, you place where you put the sheep, are similar words? Compare that to Jeremiah 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So what is a pastor? Well, let's take a look at the Hebrew root word. And it's ra'ah. And the King James Bible translates this same word 75 times as feed, you know, like feeding the sheep. Shepherd, isn't that interesting? Shepherd, didn't Jesus say he was the good shepherd? King David, he was a shepherd. Wasn't Jacob who became Israel? He was a shepherd. A lot of shepherds in the Bible. Pastor, herdman, that's, that's you know, um, somebody that tends to the sheep could be called a shepherd, but a herdsman would be somebody that would herd cattle, right? Keep. Well, you if you're a keeper of the sheep, right? Companion, broken, company, devour, eat, entreat, and then ten times as miscellaneous. But it means uh, to pasture, to tend, to graze, to feed, to shepherd. Uh, could also mean of a ruler for a teacher of people as a flock, uh, to help feed or graze, in association with friends, a companion, or a special friend. I think you get the idea. In Genesis 4, chapter 2, you're talking about Eve, and she again bare his brother Abel, as opposed to Cain, right? And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. That's that word. Uh, pastors. It's the same word. Keeper. Keeper of sheep. And then in Genesis 13, verse 7, And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in the land. So herdmen, that's the same word as pastor. So, same word. Now here's an interesting verse. Genesis, Genesis 48, verse 15. Jacob Israel is getting ready to bless his sons. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. The word fed, same word as uh, shepherd. So I guess we're, well, we're, we're the sheep, right? The Lord's sheep. Now, let's see. Genesis 49, 24. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Didn't Jesus say he was the chief cornerstone? Didn't somebody say that uh, the rock was Christ? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Catholic Church. Christ is the rock, not Peter. You know, in 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 17 and verse 40, 
speaking about David when he's getting ready to face Goliath. And he took a staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Remember, he took the stone with the sling and uh, gave uh, Goliath a headache. Why did he pick five stones? Simple. Goliath had four brothers. Five, four plus one is five. A lot of people didn't know that. So he took out five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag. The word shepherd, same word as pastor, which he had even in a, in a script and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So David was a shepherd and the word shepherd is the same word as pastor. Now, 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2. Let's take a look. Also in time past when Saul, remember King Saul? When Saul was king over us, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said unto thee, Thou shalt feed, thou shalt feed, same word as pastor, thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So this was when uh, what they were saying to David when he was to become king. Okay. First Kings 22, verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. Same word. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. 23rd Psalms. Probably one of the most famous verses in all the Bible, world chapters in the Bible. A lot of people, when I was doing volunteer work at the VA cemetery, would uh, have me request me to read this. What a beautiful uh, thing. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. Same word as pastor. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, sh I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sometimes you can get more from the Bible just reading where how they translated the same word in different places. For example, the uh, word nations and Gentiles... I know some of you are probably tired of hearing me teach this. But the word Gentiles and nation and nations, Gentiles, plural and singular, is the same word. So when they're talking about the nations of Israel, um, it's the same word used for Gentiles. So Proverbs 22, 24, make no friendship. Same word as pastor, same word as shepherd. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Well, if you're going to be friends with somebody that's angry, somebody that's furious, uh, aren't, you, aren't they feeding you um, their evil emotions? Proverbs 28, 7. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion, same word, 
But he that is a companion of riotous men shameth, shameth his father. So we're not supposed to be a companion of people who riot, right? Okay, Proverbs 29, verse 3. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company, company, with harlots spendeth his substance. I think that might be the next Bible study I do, harlots. There's a physical and a spiritual application of that. So, I think you're getting the idea. Here's an interesting uh, few verses. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. Now, what's a watchman? It's a, you know, it's a guard. Um, if you were on guard and, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, everybody's asleep, well, and you see an army coming, well, you know, you want to sound the alarm and wake everybody up so that they can meet the enemy at the gate and meet the enemies at the walls. You don't want the enemy to come and overtake everybody when they're asleep. Um, but his watchmen are blind. But they're not blind with physical blindness. The watchmen are God's God's shepherds and the, the people that are watching over the flock, they're spiritually blind. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. What's ignorance? Ignorance is not knowing something. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means that you don't know something. When it comes to rocket science and brain surgery, I am totally ignorant. Chemistry, too, pretty much. They are all dumb dogs. Uh, back in those days, dumb, if somebody was deaf and dumb, if they were deaf, they couldn't hear, but if they were dumb, they couldn't speak. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Like an old dog, don't bark, don't hear nothing. All it wants to do is eat and sleep. And what are dogs good for? They're good for barking at, at what they perceive to be a dangerous situation. They're supposed to be your first line of warning. You know, that, that's what a dog's supposed to do. I mean, it's supposed to warn the master, hey, there's this might be a problem. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They're talking about the pastors now, right? Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Yep, the shepherds are always... The false shepherds are always looking for their own gain. They don't look after the flock. They're blind. They're ignorant. They don't even know that they don't know that they're on their way to hell. They're like dumb dogs. They, they don't bark. All they do is sleep, lying down. They're greedy. They don't understand. They always look out for themselves. And they fill themselves with, with drinking Turn to Jeremiah chapter 50, and starting in verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. What's their resting place? It was the Lord. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord. 
the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of Chaldeans and be as the he-goats before the flocks. Do you want to be a goat? Or do you want to be a sheep? A lamb? Turn to Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 2. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds. Same word as pastors. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus say, saith the Lord God of the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. That word feed is the same word. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, let's read Ezekiel 34 from the beginning. Verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the flat, ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Oh yeah, you fleece the sheep and you kill them, but you don't feed them. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. Remember, Jesus said he came to save the lost sheep. But with force and cruelty have ye ruled them, and they were scattered, because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat, to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, and not my flock, and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. Ooh. So when the sheep get killed because the shepherd didn't do his job, the Lord's going to require it of them. Their life's going to be on their hands. Think about that next time you watch TBN or 700 Prophets of Baal Club. Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. Isn't that what the TV preachers do? They feed themselves. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Ooh. Where did we read about the cloudy and dark day? You know, one thing about the King James Bible, these uh, deceivers will always go, Oh, you're one of those King James only people. Oh, you're deceived. That's what, well... No, actually, they're the, the ones, they're, they're deceived or deceivers. The King James Bible, when you see a certain usage of language, 
And when you do a search of all those same word structures, like day of darkness or darkness and day, or you'll all the verses that pertain to that particular phrase will line up. And then you can get the understanding of it. But the modern Bibles, what they do is they destroy that continuity so that you never know that uh, the book of Joel, chapter 231, is tied in with Amos 5.18 or Amos 5.20 or Zephaniah 1.15 or Acts 2.20 or Romans. Uh, well, no, not Romans. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, you just don't know that these things all go together. There's just, you know, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. So let's read about the day of darkness. Joel, chapter 2. I'm not sure. Should we start in verse 1? Eh, maybe we'll start in verse 1. Yeah. Start from the beginning, right? That's always a good idea. Oh, and by the way, um, I was going to retire, but my employer uh, gave me something, an incentive not to retire. So I'm going to stay for probably at least three or four more months. All right, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion? Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Now just remember something. There are seven vials and seven trumpets in the book of Revelation for the uh, what they call the tribulation period. But Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 52, says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, well, you know, if Revelation is the last book in the Bible that is, you know, the end, and there are seven trumps, well, if there's the last trump, well, that would be the seventh one, right? It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So, when... Uh, when, when uh, Joel here says, you know, blow the trumpet in Zion, well, this is when Christ is coming back. So, Joel 2, verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. What's the holy mountain? The Mount of Olives, right? Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. It's close, right? A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds. Ooh, a day of clouds. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Behold, he, who? Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Because of him, even so, amen. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, this is the elect, this is the chosen, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, aside, lay, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hmm. Joel 2.2 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Wow. I'm seeing a lot of prophecy here. What about you? A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. 
The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. All right, want to see something about fire? Turn to 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thessalonians, uh, though that was a city, Thessalonica was a city in Greece, by the way. Verse 2, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abundeth. Aboundeth. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Boy, you don't hear that preached anymore, do you? Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. That's coming, people. America's never really suffered persecution. Not really. I mean, here and there, yeah, but it's coming. Verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Oh yeah, God's going to pay them back. They trouble you, God's going to trouble them. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Oh yeah, see, global warming is real, people. See, right here. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that they obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So just because you know God, that doesn't mean anything. you got to obey the gospel too, right? And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Ooh. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. What day? The day of the Lord. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, turn to Second Peter chapter three verse one. A lot of the Paul haters, the Hebrew roots people and what have you, will uh, tell you Second Peter is a fake book, doesn't belong in the Bible. Uh, reason being is that in this letter, the epistle, they, Paul is affirmed as an apostle. So they'll, that's why they tell you that, you know, oh, it's a fake book, it doesn't belong in the Bible. Well, what they're telling you is it doesn't belong in their Bible. See, their Bible's the church, uh, the, the uh, satanic Bible, the church of Satan. Or the Kabbalah, I don't know. Um, okay, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. And the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Isn't that today? And saying, where is the promise of his coming? <laughs> They'd say that now. Well, where is this Jesus? You keep saying he's going to come back one day. Well, it's been 2,000 years. He hasn't come back yet, so he ain't coming back. He's dead. He's buried. He's gone. 
I've heard that. Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of this coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Oh yeah, the flood of Noah, people. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, I, I honestly believe the Lord would like to see Satan come to repentance, but uh, that ain't going to happen. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. To who? Not to, unbelie not to believers, but for unbelievers. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Hmm. Do you know what the sun, all the elements in the sun are in a melted state? You know, the sun's not like a, a, a wood fire. I mean, you've got all the metals up there and they're in a liquid molten state. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. The day of God, the day of the Lord, day of Christ. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Read Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Ooh, here we go. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, wrestle, that they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. The people that wrestle Paul's writings and say they don't belong, they wrestle those and their, the other scriptures to their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Ooh. Okay, back to Joel chapter 2. I guess we'll read verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, the last trump, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. 
you know, that's interesting. There's going to be a great earthquake in the end times, too. Uh, Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Wow. Before their face the people shall much shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is right out of Matthew 24 and Revelation, people. Right out of it. Let me read Matthew 24 real quick. Uh, Let's see. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, shaken, earthquake or something, right? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Didn't we just read about that? Coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Sound the trumpet in Zion. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Okay, and contrast that with Revelation 8 and verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, with what? A trumpet. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. All right, back to Joel 2, verse 10. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their signing. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Good question. Oh, let's see. Verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. You know what a solemn assembly is? 
it's not a football game, a bunch of people gathering. You know, you always hear about revivals. Revivals always start with fasting and prayer, always. R true revivals, not this garbage that they call revivals that they pass around a collection plate to collect money. Verse 16, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts, let the bridegroom, bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they should say among the people, where is their God? That's what's happening to America and Europe. The heathen are, are, going, are ruling over us. Verse 18, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and the hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. The fig tree was a symbol of Judah. And the vine? The vine was Israel. And Israel and Judah are not the same. Verse 23. Be glad, then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, ye your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. For those of you that don't know what the first month's not January, it's uh, usually the end of March or the beginning middle of April. That spring was to be the first month in the Hebrew calendar, not January, the dead of winter. That's, I don't know. Um, verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Hmm. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat a plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be afraid, shamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. I guess, that's, I guess I'm going to be dreaming dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. From Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance that the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 9. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and, ca and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. 
and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. And uh, I haven't seen the Lord come and do this, so uh, I'm sorry, I don't think the United Nations is the Lord. 1948, the Israelis. Verse 14, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall be their, shall their fold be. There, sh there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Ooh. You know, in Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Turn to John chapter 10, and starting in verse 1. You know, the word shepherd is interesting. Um, the word herd is in it, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D, herd, shep, herd, you know, a herd of sheep, cattle. I mean, it's it. that's what you call an embed. Um, let's say you didn't, you were a new person to English and you didn't know what the word meat meant, you know, like steaks and hamburgers. If you would look at meat, M-E-A-T, you would see the word eat, E-A-T, in the word meat. I'll give you an indication of what meat means, right? John, chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. You know, he knows you by name. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Je uh, spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Duh, guys, don't you get it? You know, I always got to explain these parables to you. What's the deal, right? Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is in hireling, you know, the hired help, you know, TBN preachers, the 700 club preachers, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. The hireling doesn't care about the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay my da life down for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore again, among the Jews for these sayings, and many of them said, and many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Unto this day, in the Jewish Talmud, that's what they say. They say, Jesus has a devil. And he's crazy. Why do you listen to him? Verse 21. Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, obviously, this isn't all the Jews, but this particular group of them. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you for my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, but because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, It is not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. There he abode. And many resort, resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there, on him there. Back to Ezekiel 34, verse 16. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and I will strengthen that which was sick. That's what Jesus did. He healed the sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. That comes on the final day. Seemeth it a small thing unto you that uh, unto you to have eaten up the good pasture that ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your of your pastures and to have drunk of the deep waters that ye must foul the residue with your feet and as for my flock they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet and i will set up one shepherd over them christ right and he shall feed them even my servant david christ was the son of david he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they they all shall have one shepherd. 
They shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Uh, the floor and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth, increaseth lies and desolations, and they, sh and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. And he said, The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the inhabitants of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out of that place in Samaria, in the corner of a bed, and in Damascus in a couch. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh, Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble, saying, Now this is talking about, uh, I'm sorry. Ooh. I'm sorry, I've been reading uh, different. This is not all the uh, same thing. Uh, Amos 1-2 was where the um, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 37-24 And David my sure servant shall be king over them and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes to do them. Hosea 4-16 For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Hosea 9.2 The floor and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. See, that's what happens when you get judgment for failing to follow the shepherd. And then in Hosea 1.2 was uh, Ephraim feedeth on the wind. And then we had Amos 1 verse 2, and he said... The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the inhabitants of the shepherd shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. Now contrast this. Jeremiah 10.21 For the pastors are become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flock shall be scattered. Jeremiah 12.10 Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. So the pastors uh, destroyed the vineyard. Well, what is the vineyard? The answer is in Isaiah 5 and verse 7. And your modern Bibles destroy this continuity. That's why I say stick with the King James. For the vineyards, I'm sorry, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Hmm. Jeremiah 12.10 Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Jeremiah 23 verse 1 Woe be unto the pastors that destroy, destroy and scatter the sheep. Verse 2 Therefore thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my sheep. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them, driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Contrast that. Contrast that with Jeremiah 3 and verse. Now let's see, what do we think? 15. Well, let's do 14. Jeremiah 3 and verse 14. Turn, O backsliding ch children, saith the Lord, 
for I am married unto you. Well, what's this? when Christ comes back, it's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mine, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they, neither shall that be done any more. Verse 17. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north, Huh? In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Well, what land was given to an inheritance unto Israel and Judah's fathers? Israel. What's presently called Palestine. Israel. Well, what land is north of that? And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. What land's north? Europe, people. This is the end times. You know, verse 17, At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given un, uh, for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land? a goodly heritage of the host of nations. And I said, thou shalt, call, thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications, of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel." For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Back to Ezekiel 34. Verse 11, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, 
and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture, and shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost. What was lost? Israel was lost. And bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them. One shepherd, Christ. And he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them in the places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing, and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastures, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. All right, we're getting close. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he, Jesus, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved, moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Matthew 25, 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. You want to be on the sheep on the right side. You don't want to be on the goats on the left side. Remember when Jesus was in the garden and he told them that, uh, you know, Judas had betrayed him and get ready to have him arrested? Matthew 26, 31. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Mark chapter 6, 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And as we read, well, let's see. Matt, her, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought Again, from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant. 1 Peter 2.25 for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd, the bishop of your souls. 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Jesus said in John chapter 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, the great shepherd of the flock. Amen.